in this video, I kind of want to go over the a brief question of C++ versus Blueprint and Unreal Engine. Which one should you use? Which one is the ultimate choice? And which one is right for you? Well, most likely the answer is going to be both. And realistically, you should not choose one or the other. Instead, you should use them in hand in hand because quite frankly, Blueprint complements C++ very well. However, if you are going to be going the Blueprint route with C++ in it as well, you are going to want to have to make some decisions that you might not otherwise have to if you stuck with purely C++ or purely Blueprint. Now, you can use them both together, and quite frankly, that's what a lot of this stuff is that I'm just kind of using my plugin as a demo. For example, if I head over to my firearm, I have a lot of the logic, because this is an example piece, I have all the logic for firing and all that fun stuff done here in Blueprint. Everything's replicated, everything's good to go, and it's all done purely in Blueprint. However, you will see some functions here. For example, get muzzle projectile socket transform. This is not a native C plus, or this is not a native uh, Unreal Engine function that you can call from Blueprint. This is where C plus plus comes in. So, for example, this is something that I want to have be able to be called from C plus plus or Blueprint. So, what I have here is a blueprint functions library all it is is a bunch of static functions that i use as helpers so for the function get muzzle projectile socket transform well that's not in here let me actually head over to the firearm which is where it is let's see muzzle projectile socket right here if we go over to that as you can see here we have the function and what it's doing is it's also making a call to my get estimated muzzle to zero function that's over here in static. So we could ultimately call that directly as well and make use of it from there. This just simplifies it because it's specific to the projectile. So really, you want to go hand in hand because if we look up here, the parent class is a C++ class for this firearm. They're, we're not derived from a blueprint class or anything like that. It is derived directly off of a C++ class, which means I have access to all of these definitions that I have set right here. Now something that makes this more useful. It gives you the option of doing it from either C++ or Blueprint. It gives you the option if you start with C++ first. If you build your class straight out of Blueprint, you are losing the ability to at least easily make use of anything from it from C++. And that's something I see an issue with with some of these plugins on the marketplace. They will be made entirely out of Blueprint. And that's because they expect you to use Blueprint with them. Now, if you're someone like me and you really don't touch Blueprint all that much, unless where you feel like it is the much better choice, then that becomes a problem. So if you build your own interaction action system and you're trying to interact with something that's strictly that you bought off the marketplace that's made only in Blueprint, you're going to have a little bit of a frustrating time. And that's one of the things I kind of wanted to lead with there. Now, on the other hand, we also have some ways of, oh, my food's done. That's convenient. Setting this up to where you can use both very easily. So, for example, if I head over to my character, and let's see. Whoa. I didn't know you could actually scroll like that. But if I head down to, let's see, where do we interact with one of the firearms? So, for example, uh, let's see. We actually call it here as well. So the event fire. So if we head over where they have the left mouse click. Here we are. We have fire and stop fire. Now these are called directly on the firearm. However, the class we are firing or we are calling this on is the FPS template firearm. It's the C++ class. Now how is the C++ class, or sorry, how is this being called right here when this is an event? From the C++ version of the class. Well, one thing we can do that is also one way we can kind of expand on this is, for example, right here, I have predefined some functions. So I've made these blueprint callable and blueprint native event, and that allows me to fire these from C++ or blueprint without really any headache. So we'll just look at the fire function. We define a normal function, so we can call this from C++. All we got to do is just simply call fire and because we're also assigning it or setting it up as a blueprint native event, 
that allows us to go to our firearm and bind that event. So we have fire and stop fire. We also have the function version and we have the event. Well, this isn't the right one, but the event version right here. So that allows us to set this up in either or. So because I have set up the fire function event in Blueprint, let's say I created a C++ implementation of this. Well, we could trigger off realistically either. So that gives us the ability to either override that function in C++. So for example here, and what I mean by that is right now, the fire function spawns a projectile, all that fun stuff. So like this, as you can see, there's a projectile spawning. Now what would happen if I simply deleted that fire event? Well, if we look at the log, as you can see, I'm not able to shoot anymore, but we're getting these logs printed out because it is firing the implementation. So we are now on the C++ implementation of the fire function. So we can go back and forth really just as easy as that. So the other thing that comes up is oftentimes speed. So we do have the ability to nativize blueprints. That is a tremendous help. And if you're making your game out of blueprints, that is something I would highly recommend, even if it's just a simple, small game, because really any performance you can squeeze out of it that is essentially free in this case, you should really consider doing. Now, when it comes down to the difference between normal blueprint and native blueprint, there's a good jump there. Normal blueprint compared to C++, there's an even bigger jump there. Nativized blueprint to native C++, still there's a subtle difference. But regardless of which one you choose, if you write bad spaghetti blueprint that is just poorly optimized, it runs bad, just because you switch to C++ and if you write it equally as bad, that's not going to make up for it. You can't use C++ as a crutch for your poor programming practices. It's just, don't think of it like a some sort of savior. So, oh, this game's written entirely in Blueprint. It's going to run super dirt slow. No. If the developer did their job, it should be just fine. Same thing goes with, oh, this game's written entirely in C++. It should be blazing fast and have no problem running on my hardware. Same thing. Uh, no, because I can write something that will, quite frankly, make your PC lock up. So that's really kind of the gist of it. Not the greatest in terms of examples, but I figured I'd kind of give you a rough idea of where you should be using both. So normally, if you're like me and you commonly use C++ for most things, you're going to want to start your base classes in C++. And that kind of screws you a little bit. To some extent, anyways, you can also set this up to where you have your functionality, like your implementation of some of the C++ functions inside a Blueprint, to where you can more easily interact with other Blueprint systems, such as plugins you may have purchased. So I would, I always start with my base class in C++, because that allows me to at least I can add the function definitions or declarations inside of C++ and call them from C++ while possibly having the uh, definition in Blueprint as I do and showed you with the example here for firing. So hopefully that clears it up a little bit. I'm not sure how well I explained any of this, but regardless, it's late. I'm hungry, so I'll see you in the next video.